So, you got some Marvel content for me? Yes, sir, I do. Some freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. Nice. Now, did you want to make a movie or take a secondary character and stretch a story out over eight episodes and shove that on Disney Plus? Adam, I was thinking like a third movie. You sure? Yeah, plus we already did that I Am Groot short series on Disney Plus. We did? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a thing that exists. Really? Wow, we might have to slow this machine down. I have no recollection of that. So anyway, in this movie, Rocket's gonna get injured, right? Oh no! Yeah, and so the Guardians need to go get something from the dude that created him in order to save Rocket's life. Oh, and where does Adam Warlock factor in? What? Adam Warlock? We ended the last movie with this big reveal that he was coming, so he's gotta be in this one. Ah, oh, did you, did you not include him? No, I did not. Oh, tell you what, he's the one that injures Rocket. There you go, he's in. Okay. And then, he'll... I don't know, he'll just kind of show up once in a while? That works. Oh, thank God. So what else happens? Well, so after Rocket gets injured by Adam Warlock... We promise. The Guardians want to fix him up, but they discover he has this kill switch installed inside of him by this company, Orgocorp. What's the name of the company? Orgocorp. Oh, making seal noises is tight. But seriously, what's the name? It's not important. Anyway, they gotta head over there and Gamora is gonna go with them. But she died and we showed the body and everything. Well, this is like a different, like a past version of Gamora, so she's gonna, she's there now. How? Well, see, the thing is, we could do whatever we want. We really can. It does, there's magic. It does, I don't, I don't care. That's a good point. Yeah, okay. So she doesn't actually remember her friendship with the Guardians or her relationship with Star-Lord, but by the end of the movie, she's gonna come to like them. Oh, so her and Star-Lord go kissy-kissy? No, actually, he comes to accept that the Gamora he loved is really gone and she goes back to her chosen family, the Ravagers. Whoop. No kissy kissy. No kissy kissy. Typically we do kissy kissy. But we're not gonna. It's tradition to do kissy kissy. I think it's probably better storytelling to not kissy kissy, like it's about him letting go. <laughs> You're crazy, man. So anyway, then there's gonna be some cool, fun action stuff going on on Orgo Court, but then they find out that the princess is in another castle. What? Sorry, the info they need's in another guy's brain. They gotta, they gotta go on the next fetch quest, okay? Okay. And keep in mind, sir, everyone's bickering this entire time, so that's gonna be very entertaining. It's very fun when bickering happens. Is it? God, I hope so. And so who's the big bad guy in this thing? Eh, well, see, he's actually the guy behind Orgocorp. He's high evolutionary. Okay. And he's gonna be one of the most hated villains ever. Just instantly despicable, this guy. Must have been tough to write a villain that's just instantly despicable. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, I developed this strategy that causes instant hatred in audiences. Check this out. Oh, a puppy! Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll kill you. Oh my god. You'll never work in this town again. You'll never work in any town again. I'm somehow in charge of all the towns. Easy. I'm gonna set your mailbox on fire, and while you're looking into it, I'm gonna nuke your house. Now, what's the point of the mailbox? I don't know. I'm just very upset, you son of a... Stupid. Sir, see, no, I'm just, I'm proving my point, okay? We're gonna have the high evolutionary be really mean to cute animals constantly. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's gonna work. Yeah, see, we're gonna have constant flashbacks to horrifying experiments being done to baby Rocket and his little friends. But wait, present day Rocket doesn't have cute little animal friends? Yeah. So you can see where these flashbacks are headed. Oh no! But we're gonna intercut that with fun action and bickering and stuff, so it evens out. Kind of feels like emotional whiplash. No, it's just kind of fun times and then, you know, constant, almost unnecessarily graphic depictions of animal cruelty. Oh my god. Anyway, so eventually they manage to get the codes that they need to save Rocket's life. Oh good! And they're all gonna go up against the High Evolutionary and kick his sorry butt. Why does this guy have such an apologetic butt? That's just an expression his butt's indifferent to this whole story. So does Rocket kill him? And get some sweet revenge. No, he doesn't, because he says he's one of the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. Do the Guardians not kill people? Oh no, they do. Yeah, constantly. A lot of a lot of dead bodies. Right. But not this guy for some reason. Anyway, they leave him for dead in his exploding ship. There it is. And so all the good guys are going from the exploding ship to the good guy ship, but Star Lord kind of has to travel through space to get there. Oh, we should have Adam Warlock save him. Well, I mean, Star Lord has the helmet and the rocket boots, so technically he should be fine. Yeah, maybe he forgot those at home because he was in such a rush. Seriously? Yeah, honestly, we gotta show some more Adam Warlock, dude. We promised. We promised. All right, so, uh, yeah, Star-Lord forgets his space gear for the space adventure, and Adam Warlock saves him, because we said he'd be in this. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Anyway, so then most of the Guardians decide to retire, and everybody gets happy endings. Oh! Story-wise. Oh, okay. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a good movie, you know? Just the kind of thing the MCU needs right now. Nice. I'm just, I'm glad this creative team is on our side. 
Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made you laugh. I hope it made you cry. I hope it made you cry. You hearing me? I hope you cried. All right, I'll see you around. Go wipe those tears away.